All right, guys, let's jump into what Starfield is and how to play. We are going to delve into the very basics of Starfield, like how do you win? Well, without revealing any spoilers, you have to beat the aggressively neutral slash apathetic people and discover the secrets of the universe by finding rocks. So what happens at the very beginning of the game of this first slash third person action exploration RPG? Well, at the very beginning of the game, they start you in a straight line to introduce you to the world of Starfield. You're now a miner who is either down on their luck or you've decided that mining is your new passion. You aren't the chosen one like you are in games like Oblivion, but you are the one who happens to stumble upon something that makes you a person of interest to some people in a secret club that everybody knows about but nobody cares about. From the mines, you meet a man who immediately gives you a spaceship and he has a robot prison guard escort you to the secret club that nobody cares about. However, you should care about the secret club because secrets of the universe, etc. Also, they told you to care about it. Now, once you meet everyone and learn the secret handshake, you can do whatever you want. But before we keep going, a word from our sponsors. Have you ever wanted a delicious cube of room temperature cheesesteak? A cube of room temperature cola pieces? Or have you ever wanted to live a more fancy lifestyle with a cube of Cabernet? Well, of course you have. So come on down to Chunks and have a chunk a day. And back to our regularly scheduled programming. They will tell you what your next task is, but you can ignore that nonsense and go do whatever you're doing well please. If you decide to not go on their super secret treasure hunt, you can use the mission menu to find the whispers and murmurs that you've heard around Jemison. You will learn of events and quests just from eavesdropping on people's private conversations, or you can go up to random people and demand information from them to get new quests. You also have the option of punching a random person in the face, accidentally picking up someone else's styrofoam coffee cup, or committing heinous acts of violence to be recruited into a secret military organization against your will. There are a number of deep quest lines that you can play as a part of Starfield. There is the Soulless Corporate Thieves Guild. Apologies for the redundant adjectives. There's the Ancient Travelers who've never learned what compromise is. There's Mall Cop Simulator. Texas Justice in Space. Overly trusting but judgmental secret military operation versus the extremely rude pirates. The Vanguard quest line, which might be the best quest line in the game. And there's many, many more. There are numerous opportunities to have novel experiences like the ones mentioned just now, and there are quite a few opportunities to have experiences that feel a little too identical. When you complete one of the long quest chains, you gain access to mission terminals that are themed around those quests. For example, the Raylan Given simulation allows you to take down bad guys and rescue damsels as well as dudes in distress before you even finish the quest line. And then you can do it again and again and again and again, and it's totally different every time because sometimes you have to kill the very evil pirates rather than the moderately evil pirates. The social simulations within the game can also be quite deep or exceptionally shallow, depending on the NPC you happen to be speaking to. Just know that the more they look like their motion capture was done with a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic, the less likely it is that they will lead to an interesting plot or conversation. Sometimes, even when they are done well, they just outright suck. I didn't think you had a chance. Especially after you screwed up that rake job. I thought it was a bad omen. As far as gameplay is concerned, you level your character by fighting opponents with mediocre AI, completing quests over large expansive star systems, crafting weapons and gear, convincing people to do weird stuff, completing missions, completing a sometimes difficult but entertaining minigame that might yield nothing on the other side of that important person's wall safe, and exploring the galaxy. After you do all that, you can purchase skills with skill points that you gained from leveling. You will also need to complete certain tasks in order to advance to the next level of a given skill. The combat is primarily a first-person shooter with opportunities to explore stealth and starship combat. Let's start with stealth. Overall, stealth is a more difficult mechanic than previous Bethesda titles. However, they give you better information through the stealth indicator, which you need to invest a skill point into to see it at all. Once you have access to the stealth bar, you can see how much noise you are creating, and you can see the progress toward reaching the next level of awareness. Green means they have no idea where you are. Orange means they're aware that someone is around and they're looking for them. And red means that you need to reload your save if you're doing a mission for the super judgmental slash secret military operation that requires you to not dispatch a bunch of innocent hench people. Despite the existence of starships and a pretty comprehensive ship builder that allows you to build some pretty cool stuff from scratch, Starfield's ship combat can feel more like a wallless arena under the sea than combat in the open expanse of space where inertia exists. As you progress, you'll want to upgrade your ship's grav drive as well as your fuel tanks in order to be able to travel further and further without stopping for gas. Despite the fact that you need to stop for gas due to the limits of your grav drive, you don't actually need to stop for gas since they scrapped the gas station building simulator halfway through development. So your fuel max is the baseline indicator of how far you can jump between loading screens. While your ship is needed to get from star to star, most everything is done via fast travel. You just can't do it without a ship. If you're hoping for games like No Man's Sky or Elite Dangerous, 
then unfortunately you're thinking of the wrong game. There is an argument to be made that Bethesda created the expectation that the game might work like that, but we can't be angry about the unrealistic expectation that they intentionally created. Let's talk a tiny bit more about ships though. When you're evaluating weapons or engines, you need to look at their output, like thrust, damage, etc., versus their max power. The power is an indicator of how much power from your reactor it takes to use that system at full blast. And unless you've designed your ship very poorly, your reactor will never produce enough juice to run all of your various systems at full power simultaneously. Luckily, you can allocate and reallocate power to the various systems during combat. All this is to say that if you're looking at a weapon with a low power draw and low damage, it's very possible that you can just tack on more weapons or engines of the same type and produce more damage or thrust overall than if you buy the one big honker with mucho big numbers. Moving back a step to the mention of gas stations from before, you still have the option to build your gas stations, aka outposts. You can even station some of the people you've met in bars at your outposts. Speaking of bars, other than the main questline people, any other companions who follow you on your journey to rediscover the universe and assist you in combat can all be met in bars. Every planet with a decently populated planet has a bar, and that is where you'll find your new friends. Just make sure your fridge is filled with drinks so that you can appease all of the violent alcoholics that you bring with you on your trip. On top of outpost crafting, you can also craft gear, weapons, medicine, and food. Food is useful for the different buffs it can give you, but healing will typically come from med packs that you can find on corpses or buy from vendors. However, no matter what you want to make, it's a better use of your time to buy the materials you need rather than trek across the galaxy to gather the materials, especially since there isn't an efficient way to see where you can gather everything. Now, this lady has tons of materials to buy, and don't forget to buy ammo every time you see a vendor. Your favorite weapon never has enough ammo. Ever. Oh yeah. And if you want to focus on crafting, then you need to invest your skill points into the various crafting skills in one of the more unintuitive mechanics of the game. While the game is packed with a ton of content, much more than previous Bethesda installments, the fact that the game takes place across the galaxy can make the game feel a bit empty. Starfield is like having 5,000 very fancy marbles spread across a football field, whereas Fallout 4 is like having 1,000 very fancy marbles inside of a dirty microwave. That makes it so that when you go exploring can be a bit of a trek, and that trek is not always rewarding. Now, due to the fact that you need a spaceship to get everywhere in Starfield versus a horse and other installments, it only makes sense that things would be a bit spread out, but that doesn't stop it from feeling a bit empty. Overall, to succeed in Starfield, make sure you bring plenty of med packs, buy plenty of ammo, upgrade your ship frequently, and don't piss off your companions. All right, out with it. What the hell is the matter with you? Whatever, Sarah. I hope this was helpful. If I didn't waste your time, give it a like, and good luck discovering the stars.